I'm Julie, and I'm a How Not to Sailor. I'm Blowtorch Mike, a How Not to Sailor. And I am Evie. And I am Jim. And I'm Hammer Bridget. One, two, three. What What could could possibly possibly go wrong? wrong? Oh, no! (laughs) Ahoy there. This is Bradford, and you know I'm a How Not to Sailor. Just a little salute there from our completely ad hoc Patreon meetup in St. Pete. And just a note here, if you're one of the folks who may be trying unsuccessfully to get into the How Not to Sail private Facebook group, I have some information at the end of today's episode that I think you'll find useful. But meanwhile, let's consider for this episode, and bringing back a classic segment from the beginning of Chapter 3 in my book, How Not to Sail, a bit of How Not to Sail 101. Who needs an engine? Hey, Moitessier didn't have an engine. Why should I? Just think how impressive it'll be when I sail into the marina slip. Plus, I can save all kinds of money on fuel and maintenance. Yeah. As it turns out, you kind of need an engine these days. For one thing, entering and leaving your marina slip under sail is ill-advised and frowned upon most places. JC Sales, you can't do that. That is not allowed. You can't do that. And then there's those times when the wind isn't favorable and you're on a schedule. It actually is really nice to have a dependable engine to get us from the Keys up to the mainland when there's not much wind. Which brings me to where we are now. In the last episode, I returned to the boat after almost four months and found that it was, how shall we say, a show. The f- man. That is not a cleanup. My boat was now repaired and fully insured, but super dirty inside. He left it a wreck. And I had the Admiral and our friend Jay coming down to theoretically go cruising. And then Monday, we would need to cruise down to Sarasota or Bradenton. And then I-, I was cautiously optimistic that I'd be able to clean up the boat, fix the toilet, and be ready for my crew to arrive until I checked on the engine. We got no engine cooling at the moment. Good thing I decided to crank the engine before the crew starts to drive down here for eight hours. Yeah, no water going through the engine means no engine cooling, which means no running the engine. And even though it is a sailboat, I usually don't enter or leave a marina under sail. JC Sails, how about going around, Captain? How about going around? But surely I can find a solution to this engine cooling issue and save our crews, right? Ow, 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 ow. What could possibly go wrong? How Not to Sail, sponsored by our awesome Patreon crew and by Captain Bob Bitchin and BobBitchin.com. And of course, by the book How Not to Sail, which, like everything else How Not to Sail, you can get at HowNotToSail.com. Just say your name, and uh, I've been sailing for X number of years. Jay Elmore from Atlanta, and I've been sailing for about 50 years. Our friend Jay is not just the only person to take me and the Admiral on a bareboat charter. He's also the wise fellow who passed on buying the very vessel I'm currently trying to clean up for his arrival. Of course, I'm glad Jay passed up on buying this boat, because I've had a decade of sometimes funny, often stupid, and occasionally scary adventures. But right now, I'm in more of a non-adventurous, engine-fixing kind of predicament. You called me and said, uh, I'm working on the engine. The cooling water's not coming through it. So I suggested to Jay and the Admiral that they should maybe just come on down, since at the least we had a floating crash pad. So I drove down, I get here, and sure enough, the, that had not been resolved. I did not succeed in getting the cooling water running through the engine prior to Jay and the Admiral's arrival. But I did make strong resolutions to get the place cleaned up. Yep, strong resolutions. By the time the Admiral and Jay were two or three hours away, it had become apparent to me that not only was I not going to solve the engine problem before they arrived, 
I might not even be able to get the place clean enough for humans to safely sleep there. It looked like I was failing on multiple fronts, something that happens sometimes. Not only was the boat unfit for habitation, but since it was almost spring break, even the Billmar out on Treasure Island was asking 500 a night for rooms. I mean, the Billmar's cool and all, but not that cool. Thankfully, our friend Jim had an idea. There was no way you were staying on the boat, so I called my friend Evie. Could you house a few of my friends because their boat is covered in fiberglass? The Admiral was coming down with her boss. Turns out it was you and Tanya and Jay. And I said, well, you should charge them money. Well, what do I charge? And I said, I don't know, but you should think of something. I never go out on Saturday night. So, well, then, you know, maybe you should ask them to take you out to dinner. So I was very happy to attend dinner. So that's how that all transpired. Thanks to the kindness of a stranger, we solved our lodging problem Saturday night, and Sunday we started making some progress. On the cleaning, at least. I just painted the engine recently, I cleaned and painted, but now it's already getting a little rusty. But I was starting to have a bad feeling about the engine. Yeah, that would normally come off the back of the manifold. It goes up and then back into the elbow with, with the water. I just took that off to do this flush. I'd narrowed down the blockage in the engine cooling to the manifold, which as I understood it was basically a chamber on top of the engine. Yeah. I'd jury-rigged a little setup to flush just that part with water, but it wasn't having any of it. There's the manifold. Yeah. There's the thermostat housing. I thought maybe I could get Blowtorch Mike to soak the manifold in muriatic acid or something, if I could just remove it. Hey, what's shaking? But the prospect of me removing the manifold was pretty daunting. I've just come to my limit on mechanical aptitude. I'm, I think taking the manifold out is off is where I stop. <laughs> and then Jim pointed out something even more ominous. Uh, Jim did also opine that, uh, looking at the manifold, that there may not be room to get it off or reinstalled without pulling the engine. If it comes down to pulling the engine, making this trip isn't going to be the biggest issue. For once, I'm starting to consider the unthinkable. That B and J.C. Sales, after a decade of memories, might have to part ways. Wow, that doesn't sound good at all, does it? Well, while my situation seems to be taking on water, this is as good a time as any to remind you that you can help keep How Not to Sail afloat for as little as $3 a month. Just go to hownottosail.com slash Patreon. But as you know, you can find everything How Not to Sail at hownottosail.com. If you're looking for other ways to help spread the gospel of How Not to Sail, just go to hownottosail.com slash help. There's a bunch of things there that won't cost you a penny and will help spread the word. Thank you for telling your friends to go visit hownottosail.com, for leaving nice reviews on Apple Podcasts and wherever else you can review the podcast, and for the book, now let's get back to this whole engine problem. Can you pull those studs out of the block? I don't know. With Blowtorch Mike on the phone and Jim and I staring at the engine, we've got a bit of a sinking feeling. So it's like if you can't get those studs out, you, I don't think you're going to get that thing off. No, you're probably right. If the manifold somehow corroded shut and we can't get it off without pulling the engine, I'm well and truly f***ed. Yeah. I don't know if you could get some muratic down in there and try to flush that in place. 
Well, that's, that's the best option, but the problem is, in place, you'd be getting it all over your bilge. Yeah. But there's one thing I need to try before throwing in the towel. Now, if you take that mixing elbow off, there is a plate there with four bolts. Right. I think you might be able to be able to rod that out a little bit. Oh, okay. What Mike's suggesting is that I stick the upper part of my body into the engine compartment from the quarter berth. Okay and unbolt this plate from the back side of the engine in hopes I might find something there that I can clean out. Is that too far to reach? Oh, it's just a little far, isn't it? Now I've got Jay standing in front of the engine with the flashlight in the cabin while I'm doing some boat gymnastics through the quarter berth. So let me grab the ratchet, sorry, and make sure that fitting is not blocked. I start loosening the bolts on the plate where the exhaust elbow is attached. One more. And... Huh. Well, that is... funky. I think I may see the other end of the manifold, so what the hell? It turns out I'm looking at a pretty clean-looking chamber with no sign of blockage. And I realize the part the water goes through is, of course, a smaller hidden chamber above it. I assume there's a passage for the water above that shelf. And all we can really do is poke a screwdriver into the two holes on top that we can get to and hope maybe we loosened up some gunk. Interesting. There might have been some blockage, right? Anything loose? Uh, no, it looks like I got something interesting on yeah, there. Yeah, no kidding. We get a little bit of black stuff on the tip of the screwdriver when we stick it into the top of the manifold, but nothing that seems like it could have blocked off all the water. Maybe we got something loose. And if we're able to declare victory, that would be... Unlikely is the word you're looking for. Oh, it's black under there anyway. <laughs> My mm. bad. Still, I choose to be optimistic. Okay, I'm going to get pictures, put the plate back on... And try and flush it. So it's time to crawl back into the quarter berth. Ow, 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 ow. Can we come up just a hair? Ah. And with Jay's help, put the plate back on the back of the engine. Yeah, it's in there. Okay. Woohoo! Then, after reconnecting my little flushing hose back to the back top of the manifold, it's time to see if anything happens. Uh, okay, you got, you got that open there. You think you expect it to come out there? Yeah, or this this hose. There we are. Yeah, baby. Success. Yeehaw! A lot of junk in there. Yeehaw! Okay. I think we fixed the clog. <laughs> hey. Hot damn. What's that saying about a room full of monkeys with typewriters eventually coming up with a novel? What's a little fresh water on the alternator? <laughs> Sometimes I'm that room full of monkeys. Well, I assume it's better than salt water on the alternator. And the good news is, you can be that room full of monkeys too, if just a minimum of persistence and maybe a little stubbornness. Looks like we won't have to sell the boat after all. At least, not quite yet. And there's almost nothing better to my ears than the sound of cooling water coming out the exhaust. So even though it's too late to get to Sarasota today, I feel confident that Jay and I can get the boat down there tomorrow while the Admiral is working. I feel like everything should be smooth sailing from here. Join me in two weeks on Friday the 19th when hopefully we'll make it to one of the most beautiful sailing spots on the Gulf, Sarasota, Florida. And hey, be sure and tell a friend. Thanks as always to our awesome Patreon crew, like our friend Mark. Hope to see you at the undisclosed location soon. And don't forget you can find the Patreon crew sign up and all things How Not to Sail at HowNotToSail.com. Okay, just a quick note about the Facebook group, like I mentioned at the beginning. I can tell you that we actually have like, I don't know, 
300 applicants who are still waiting in the queue because of one simple problem. In order to join the private Facebook group for How Not to Sail, you must answer the entry questions, otherwise nothing will happen. So if you're not on there and you thought you should be, just email me at bradford at hownottosail.com and I'll try and make sure I get you squared away. Meanwhile, don't let your manifold get clogged, and I'll see you in two weeks on How Not to Sail. Screwing up is part of cruising. Let me show you how. Some stuff there? I think there might be. Huh. 